Well, hello everybody, it's Dan, your friendly fishmonger at dancefish.com. A little while ago, we released an unboxing video showing what the fish look like when they arrive to our facility after they've been imported. Um, it's now been two weeks since the day that we unboxed those fish. So most of them are out of quarantine. We always quarantine our fish for at least two weeks. By then, most fish are, are ready to go. Some take a little longer, depending on how they're doing. But I'm gonna go around now and show you what those fish look like in the aquariums two weeks after they arrived here at the end of their quarantine period. So let's take a look. I'm gonna start with a betta that I'm very excited about. We also have some rare live bearers. We have some neat angelfish. We have some neat catfish. Um, a lot of different types of fish. Some killifish. Oh, the killifish are amazing. So let's get started. Okay, I wanna start with this aquarium because I'm very excited about these fish. This is betta smargadina. And this is the first time I've had success with this fish. Um, before I continue, this side of the warehouse is pretty loud. There's some big water pumps and a big air pump and some filtration equipment going next to me here. Um, so if there's a little buzz in the background, that'll go away as we move throughout the warehouse. But over by these fish, we have that, that buzz. But check these out. This is, um, these are wild fish, by the way. And look at how like not shy they are. He doesn't care that my hand's up there touching the glass. They've also been pretty easy to get to eat. Um, I'm gonna give them some pellets here. They're eating these little, little pellets. I, I did startle them when I opened the lid, but check this out. This is great for a wild betta. They'll come out and they'll just snack on these without any problem. I see at least a couple of males in there, some nice looking males. So I am very thrilled to have these. I've tried these in the past, the wild ones. I'm not talking about the uh, farm smargadina that come in all the various colors and stuff. I'm talking about like the true wild fish. Um, and they've been pretty sensitive. So what we did this time is we did a different protocol when they landed. We treated them with different medications based on what we've learned in our previous experiences. And it worked. So I am thrilled to have a nice group of these. I've loved this fish for a long time. Something that I like about it, um, similar to Betta Imbellus, is it's a peaceful fish. You can keep a group of them together, males and females. Um, as long as there's some plant cover in there, that's why we have that Java moss there. They'll get along just fine. And they breed like Betta Splendens. So if you want a tank full of really colorful, oh, look at that guy go. He's starting to, starting to color this male right here. Remember, these are just coming out of quarantine. Um, they're, they're just starting to get their color in. They're going to get even prettier over time. But, oh, where was I going? Oh, yeah, so I like Betta Splendens, but I hate that I can only have, you know, one male in a tank at a time. I can do a sorority with females, and I do that sometimes. And what I love about Smargadina and Embellus and Siam Dorsalis and some of the others is that you can have a tank full of these beautiful, awesome, personable, Again, this is wild fish, and look at this. They do not care. I am not startling them in the least. When they see us, they come out and beg for food. Um, you know, nice pet fish, just like a domesticated betta. But you can have a tank full of them and get all that male color without uh, them just destroying each other. So that's why I like this fish so much. All right, we'll move on. I probably spent too much time on these guys. I just really like them. All right, next to those bettas, we were able to get some more of the Blue Flame Apistos. Um, these are not easy to come by. There's only a few available at a time. I know of one, one, one person breeding them, one source that breeds them is all. And so I buy them whenever they have them available. This time they only had males. And again, I was only able to get around 10 of them. I will try to get females again. I've been able to get females once before, but production is very slow on these. Still a beautiful looking centerpiece fish. Um, if you have like small nano fish and you want a centerpiece that will blow your mind, these would go great with little dwarf pencil fish or chili rasboras or kubatai rasboras or any, any of those CPDs, that kind of thing. And they would just set that off nicely. So. Really neat fish, and I know everyone that is wanting to breed them, and trust me, I want you to breed them. 
I would love to have these available more often because I can hardly ever get them. Um, I'll get more females as soon as I can. Just I'm working on it. And the breeder's working on it, but it takes time. All right, these are Corridor Schwartzy. Although I see a contaminant or two in there. These are mostly Corridor Schwartzy. <laughs> Um, got these out of Aquarium Glasser in Germany, and they are doing fantastic for us. Nice fish, really neat pattern on them. As peaceful and personable and uh, wonderful as your average Cory. They get along famously. They're eating really well for us. I just dropped some um, extreme monster pellet in there. That's what they're all going to go nuts for here as they start smelling it. Really easy to get feeding and stuff. These are these are ready to go. Fat and sassy, eating well. I think they'll do great for you. So if you like Corydoras, but you're like, yeah, I've kept Aeneas, which is a great fish, and I've kept Paleotis, which is a great fish, and I've kept Sturbi, which is a great fish. Like, you know, all the disclaimers. Even these common Corys are awesome. But if you're ready to go to something a little different, then Corydora Schwartz Eye is a a nice one to consider, I think, anyway. Here is another flavor of Agazizii, Epistogramma Agazizii. These are the fire reds. They've settled in enough that the males are starting to get their color in. They're gonna get like a dark red, almost maroon, I don't know what to call it, blaze across the back, the dominant males will. The females are the ones that don't have the uh, as much red in the tail fins and don't have as pointed uh, dorsal fin or anal fin. These are doing fantastic for us. We have a good supplier of these, a good breeder of these, and they always come in hale and hearty and they always do really well for our customers. So this is one of our, our most popular Apistos because they're pretty and they live for everybody, which is fantastic. Hey, a couple things. First of all, we're trying to grow this channel to 30,000 subscribers. We're really close. But if you like this stuff and wouldn't mind taking a minute to like and subscribe and share this out, that would all be so appreciated. I'm trying to show you these Elisoma Everglade eye because this is a great um, example of male and female. The male's on the lower right there, he's black, and the female's just a little bit above him on the left, she's kind of a brown color. They're just hanging out there in the bushes, looks like he's displaying for her a little bit. I think he wants to spawn. There's another male right up there, that black guy there. The males turn this beautiful black and uh, they have uh, sparkles all over them. This is currently my favorite molly. This is the orange saffron molly. I think they're absolutely stunning. Um, on the video tour we did of our live bears just a few videos ago, you'll see uh, some video of the adults. They're big. They're impressive. They get these massive dorsal fins on them, big sail fins, and they're a big bodied fish. This line has been bred with a lot of care. So they've picked as brood stock for several generations. They've picked really nice big bodied fish. They've bred for nice, um, consistent color. There is some black splotches, splotches that, um, patches really, that will appear on some of these. But I like that. I think that contrasts nicely with that bright orange. So this is just a premium strain of these fish. Now these are younger. They haven't sexed out yet. They have not developed their big sail fin yet. And the nice thing about that is they're a lot cheaper than the adults. Once they're the big adults, they cost quite a bit more. So if you want a group of just a premium molly that is absolutely stunning as an adult, check out that video. You'll see what I'm talking about or just the picture at dancefish.com. That's a, a picture of one of those males. Um, then I think these are a bargain price for that kind of quality. Orange saffron mollies. My, I think they're my favorite. All right, check out these stunners. These are the um, green lasers, the green laser corridors. Really, really pretty fish. Very different than the golds, very different than the reds or oranges. Um, nice bright green stripe, nice green on the body. Sometimes in some lighting conditions, they have a blue hue to the body. Um, these ones are looking more green in this tank in this setup, but in my last setup, same breeder, same stock and everything. In my last setup, they looked more, um, more blue. So lighting can pay, play some tricks, but no matter which lighting you have, 
I think they're an absolutely stunning fish. All right, this is a stunning fish. I've been getting into the wild type angelfish more. This is Rio Itaya, a beautiful location, collection location for angelfish. What I love about the wild type angelfish is the body shape and those nice long straight but kind of curving ventral fins. Like look at look at these guys right there. That's what I love. That to me is what an angelfish's body and finage should look like. So I like these wild types a lot because as they get more and more domesticated, those ventral fins tend to get yeah, more and more funky. But Rio Itaya angels getting some nice color in. Again, they're just coming out of quarantine, so, they, so it'll be a little while before their full color comes in. But uh, they're starting to look really nice. These uh, Cockatoides double reds, beautiful, hardy, nice epistogramma. Um, the first one that a lot of people keep and breed and have success with. And there's no wonder it's such a popular fish. I mean, look at that bright red coloration mixed in with that kind of, I don't know what you call that, mottled black pattern. I'm not sure what the name of that pattern on the tail and the fins would be, but makes for a very beautiful fish. And the males, as they grow, are going to develop extended fin rays on their dorsal fin. And when they display, they look like a cockatoo, which is why they're called cockatoides. That's the species name, Epistogramma cockatoides. So there they are, the humpback limias, really attractively patterned fish. The males get a nice black dorsal fin and they develop a big old like nuchal hump, which is what they're named after. Kind of an impressive, interesting lie bear. And I've said it a thousand times, I'll say it again. I don't know why limias are just not more common in the hobby. They're easy to breed. They're as prolific as platys. They're hardy. They're really interesting looking. But for some reason, they've never really been bred in large numbers in the industry. So you hardly ever see them. So I'm really glad to have these. Here is another neat live bear. This is uh, Gerardinus metallicus, I think is how you pronounce it. This is the black chinned live bear. It comes in two forms. There's a yellow form, which is very nice, but I prefer this one. I like that nice black mustachioed look that the males get uh, on their chin. I think that's awesome. It reminds me of like a Frenchman, uh, a nice Frenchman's mustache from back in like the, I don't know, the 1870s or something like that. Anyway, really neat little live bear, hardy, very prolific, easy to keep. These are not a problem at all, but for some reason, they're not very common either. So I thought I'd bring some in, see if we can get them spread out. Um, one day I'm going to have my own breeding rack, and this is the kind of thing I'm going to do. I'm going to, this is one of the kinds of fish that I would like to keep and breed myself. This, a bunch of killifish, a bunch of, you know, wild type bettas and different garamis like samurai garamis licorice garamis that kind of thing i like that i listened to uh, mark denaro's talk recently on the aquarium co-op uh, members only channel he does these awesome he gets speakers in just like a fish club for five bucks a month i get to listen to i don't know how many are there like 50 talks i don't know what it is but mark talked on the uh, anabantoids and i was like yeah you know what i'd like to take a stab at licorice garamis is someday I have a good source for them, I just don't bring a lot of them in. Anyway, this is one of the fish that I, I plan to breed when I get my rack up and going, because I just think it looks so cool with that little black Frenchman's mustache. So as you've probably gathered by now, we, we sell fish here at dancefish.com. The fish I'm showing you are listed for sale. What we don't sell is food, aquarium plants, lighting, filtration, air pumps, that kind of thing. So if you need aquarium fish and shrimp and stuff like that, we've got them. But if you need supplies, check out aquariumcoop.com. If you click the affiliate link in the description of this video or click the little box, it's about to pop down up top here somewhere um, and then go buy something, we'll get a little cut of that sale, which is awesome. Anyway, let's get back to the tour. If you like fish that are as bright as the sun, we've got you covered. These are albino koi snakeskin guppies. And they're just bright as the sun. I don't know what else to say. Really, really catch your eye from across the room. Gorgeous fish. If you like these bright colors on a rainy day, just watch a tank full of these and you can't help but be happy. Like. If the sun ain't out, it is out in your tank, that's for sure. <laughs>
All right, here's another live bearer. These are the, I, I don't know, they call them different things. They call them the Bleeding Heart Live Bearer. They call them the Red Tiger or Ruby Tiger Live Bearer. All kinds of names for these platys. But what they are is a platy with these beautiful red vertical stripes on a white background. Really nice fish. The males have the deeper coloration, but the females look good too. And this group is doing absolutely fantastic for us. I don't think we've had any issues with these fish at all. We've been working with the farms, and as you saw in the unboxing, um, they're packing in very light densities for us. So not very many fish per volume of water. And that is preventing the ammonia toxicity from happening that kills so many fish during transport in this industry. So the shipping costs a lot more, which is one reason our fish are more expensive, because freight is not cheap, but the fish do so much better. So I love it. And they're doing awesome. This is the result of that. The Cardinal Tetras are looking good. Now, most people know this fish, so I won't spend a ton of time talking about it. But what I will say is this has to be one of the most beautiful fish in the entire world, including saltwater fish. Um, these have been around for a while, so by now we, we know this fish, we've seen them, you know, it's like, oh, Cardinal Tetris. But imagine if you'd never seen this fish before and suddenly it showed up in the aquarium hobby. I mean, people would pay a thousand bucks a piece for these. They're that pretty. Fortunately, we don't have to. We have to pay a few dollars, but I think they're that stunning. All right, here's that group of panda quarries that we brought in from a farm in Israel. First time getting them from that source been having trouble finding good panda quarries, and I'm thrilled to say that this group is doing really, really well. They're in there with some red onion nerite snails, um, but this batch is fantastic. So I think, I think provided that they do well for our customers and they ship well and all that, that this might be one of our new main suppliers for this species. I, I have yet to see them come in as well as they came in from these guys. We've had very minimal losses, and we looked at them yesterday, and they have full bellies. They're small, but they're, so, you know, they, they have that small quarry shape. They aren't as big and rotund as a big full-grown quarry, but uh, they seem to be doing really well. So I'm very excited to try these. Um, if you're a customer that buy the, buys these, please do report back to us after you've had them for a little while and let us know if they're doing well long-term for you. And if they do well long-term for most of our customers, I'm excited to, to make this supplier possibly one of our main sources for these because it's the best batch I've seen. Here are the uh, pineapple sword tails you saw in that unboxing video. Uh, what I love about these is that red-orange that over a little more time um, is gonna come in stronger or stronger. For now, they're just getting out of quarantine they're robust, healthy fish. Like this batch is fantastic. All right, here is uh, just about my favorite of the more, how do I say this? Cheap? I don't want to say cheap. Platy that isn't like a super fancy, really expensive platy. Um, I like some of those a lot, but of the ones that are reasonably priced, this is my favorite. This is the yellow, neon yellow calico platy. It's just vibrant and bright, has a lot of yellow and orange in it, a little bit of red. And then that contrasts so nicely with that uh, black calico pattern. So I like this fish a whole lot. Here are the Hawaii Variatus platys. I like this fish too. This is another platy that's just amazing. A lot of people agree with me. This is one of our most popular platys ever. Um, however, this batch isn't quite ready to go yet. We've had a few losses. We had a few more that went down yesterday. So it hasn't stabilized to the point where we're comfortable selling them. Um, once they do, we'll list them for sale, but I know a lot of people are waiting for these. Um, and I wish they were ready, but the fish are ready when the fish are ready. Like we can't, you know, they're living organisms. They, they stabilize and, and tell us when they're ready to go. And they're just not quite there yet. A few losses, a few that are still struggling a bit. So we're working on them. Oh, if you do want to be notified when they're ready to go, if you clicked the, um, add to wish list button, the green, I think it's green, add to my wish list button at dancefish.com. Any species that's out of stock will, if you click that button on any species that's out of stock, when it comes back in stock, 
you'll get an automated email saying, hey, they're ready now. So, um, so you'll get notified. All right, these were not in the unboxing. These are the long fin green dragon bushy nose plecos. They were bred by uh, Johnny. Johnny who works here at dancefish.com. Bred these at his house and they're for sale now at, on our website. So um, not one you would have seen in the unboxing, but still a neat little fish that is now available here at dancefish.com. Look at him go on that zucchini. We normally don't sell long finned plecos and veiltail angels and stuff just because those long fins are more likely to get damaged in shipping but these are small enough that i think they'll ship well and plus you know johnny bred them so i kind of had to sell them all right this is pseudomugil gertrude which we all know that fish right they're very common in aquariums but this is a special pseudomugil gertrude these are location specific these come from aru 2 and the reason i like them is if you look at those males Look at that nice yellow and orange that they have on the tips of their unpaired fins. Well, also their paired fins. Looking at those uh, pectoral fins, they have them there too. Um, they look like a Gertrude. They are a Gertrude, but they're just a little bit extra. They're extra fancy. They look like a normal Gertrude. Looks like it's, you know, it's got jeans and a t-shirt on. It looks fine as it's ready for today, but these guys look like they're dressed up for their wedding. I am a sucker for a killifish. I'm especially a sucker for a nice Fundalopanchax killifish. This is Fundalopanchax emiadi. They get decent size. They have nice bold coloration on them. They're hardy, they're easy to breed. If you like killifish or are interested in killifish, this would not be a bad one to start with. I love that steel blue top. I love the pattern on the tail fin. And underneath that red line that kind of goes horizontally across the midpoint of the body, um, that's going to turn bright yellow as they settle in. Okay, here's one that used to be very common and it's not very common anymore. This is Nematolebius widei. The location is San Pedro de Aldea. That's where they were collected. These are a stunning fish. They get big. They're going to get three to four inches in all their glory. They're an annual killifish. They can take cooler temperatures because they come from southern Brazil. They're hardy. These used to be one of the most common annual killifish from South America. This used to be the South American annual killifish that a lot of people started with because it's so hardy and easy and beautiful. This and, and uh, Australibius um, nigropinus and a few others. But they're hard to find now and there is there's false information going around. I'll just address this head on. There's false information going around stating that they are illegal to keep and breed and distribute in the United States. Um, in fact, I'll probably get some comments on this video stating that. And that is not true. How do I know that? Because I've talked to Fish and Game. I've talked to the authorities. I've also talked to P-Jack about this. And it's just not true. These fish were brought in legally. They were declared at customs. They were declared to Fish and Wildlife. Fish and Wildlife inspected them. Fish and Wildlife said, yep, that's fine. Bring them on in. And there is a list of fish that are illegal to keep and breed and distribute in the United States. This fish is not on that list. In fact, none of the South American annual killifish from Brazil are on that list. So it's much ado about nothing. There is a rumor going around that they are illegal to keep. Um, I'm not a lawyer, I guess I should say that, but the people I've talked to are the authorities on this area and they have told me that these are fine. So, they're fine. I'm gonna keep bringing them in and distributing them and trying to get them spread throughout the hobby um, until the authorities tell me otherwise. But I'm, I'm not doing this in secret. They know me, they know I have these fish. <laughs> We've talked about it, we're good. Speaking of beautiful annual killifish species, check these out. These are Nothobronchius gunthrai. This is the gold form. This is, so the, the YDI I just showed you were one of the common ones that people would start with when they got into South American annual killifish. These are the common, beautiful, hardy one that most beginners would start with when they started in African annual killifish. And look at how stunning these are. It's not like you're compromising on color. 
to start with these. The reason people started with them is because they were so hardy and so prolific and so easy to keep and breed that they made a great beginner fish. They also happen to be that beautiful. Look at these guys. Absolutely stunning fish. So that's Nothobronchius gunthri gold. It's a great one if you're starting into killifish. Next to them, we have these. These are another Nothobronchius species. This is Corthase, at least that's how I say it. <laughs> these are the Mafia Reds. We've had these before from the same breeder and they were fantastic. They did great for us. They did great for almost all of our customers. And so we brought some more in. And look how pretty these are. Nothobronchius are, I mean, go out to any coral reef and these will rival the fish you see there. They're absolutely stunning. They developed this really bright coloration because their natural habitat is really kind of muddy, stagnant water. And so in order for the males to attract a female, in order for the females to see the males through that really hazy, muddy water, the males had to become super brightly colored. Otherwise they would never find each other. They would never be able to attract a mate. So that's my theory anyway, on why these are some of the most stunning fish in the world, despite from basically coming from mud puddles. I mean, large mud puddles, but mud puddles nonetheless. Now it would literally be impossible to decide which of the Nothobronchius is the most beautiful, the most colorful. But a lot of killifish hobbyists would tell you this one is. This is Nothobronchius racovii or racovii. I'm not sure how you pronounce it exactly. These are the Biera collection location. A long time favorite because of its absolutely stunning beauty. Look at that. We have a nice mix of males and females. So these will make a great breeding project for someone. This guy right up in front there. I'm, I'm gonna make you seasick, sorry. Sometimes I forget that moving the camera around isn't good when I'm making videos. And I'll see a beautiful fish and I'll have to chase it with the camera and then I'm like, oh, it never turns out well. I usually have to cut that out when I edit later. Whew, there you have it. Nothobronchius racovii or racovii. Perhaps the most beautiful freshwater fish in the world according to a lot of people that I know. Okay, here is a little live bearer that you never see. This is my first time seeing these. This is Xenophallus umbratilis, the shadow tooth carp. It's a neat, really rare little live bearer. Reminds me of a cross between like a uh, Phalicthes and a pygmy swordtail of some kind. I've never seen these before. I've never seen them offered for sale before, so you know, whenever that happens, my, I wonder what that is, itch starts itching and I have to order them just to see them. I mean, good little group. We have a nice mix of sexes, so we'll be able to get you uh, all sexes if you want a neat breeding project for an ultra rare live bear. At least I think they're ultra rare. I've never seen them before. This is a really nice group of black banded sunfish. They're personable. They're like out begging for food. And where is the food? Speaking of food, these are going to prefer frozen and live foods. They can uh, learn to take prepared foods, but it's, it's, it's going to be a while. When I first got them, I would definitely start them on frozen food um, as they learn to eat the prepared foods. Really neat little fish, hard to find. Even though it's a native of the United States, I literally have to bring them in from European breeders. I don't know anyone in the United States that's breeding them in any kind of numbers. So it's a little odd to think of that, but that's the way the ball is bouncing. So that's the tour. Those are the fish we unboxed a little while ago. What a difference two weeks makes, right? Like most of them have settled in. Most of them are eating aquarium foods and are nice and getting fat and sassy now. So we can sell those ones. Now some still need more time. They'll get as much time as they need. Sometimes it takes months before we list a fish for sale, um, but it's worth it. We don't want to sell a fish unless it's healthy and we'll take the time to do that. That's what we enjoy doing is watching fish thrive for us and for our customers. Speaking of our customers, I want to thank all of our customers. I get to do this every day for a living and I love it. It's a dream for me. So thanks for your support. Also, the members of this channel are incredibly supportive. Thanks for being a member of the Fishmonger crew, if you are. And uh, I think that's it. Till next time, have a good one. Bye bye.